Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm talking about finding marginal revenue when the firm is a monopoly. And there's actually an interesting question here because if the firm's a monopoly, or if it has market power, it's facing a downward sloping demand curve. So it's not nearly as straightforward as it is with finding marginal revenue with perfect competition. With perfect competition, marginal revenue is just the market price from the entire market as a whole that the firm is taking as given. For the monopolist, well, marginal revenue and price generally aren't going to be the same unless the monopolist is practicing first degree price discrimination, then the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve are exactly the same. And I've got a video on that on first degree price discrimination. I show that picture. But here, for a more standard monopoly, we're expecting marginal revenue is generally going to be less than price. For a downward sloping demand curve, the reason why is because and the reason why it's a downward sloping demand curve is because the, the monopoly is facing the entire market demand for which the law of demand should hold. Meaning if we sell an additional unit, the price for that unit and for all previous units has to fall. So marginal revenue is generally going to lie below the demand curve. I'll show that and I'll show kind of the shortcut to calculating the marginal revenue curve and I'll show the calculus version as well. So marginal revenue, well, that's just the change in total revenue from selling one additional unit of output. And we can represent this for some linear demand curve. First, I'll show the generic, then I'll show a simple numerical example. You can see it right here. So for a, a linear demand curve, such as price is equal to A minus BQ, here, price, this is on the vertical, Q, this is on the horizontal, A, this is the vertical intercept, and minus B, that's the slope. So for linear demand like this, marginal revenue will have the same vertical intercept, A, but twice the slope. So I'll multiply this by two, and this will give me my marginal revenue curve. And this will give me marginal revenue lying strictly below the demand curve. So for example, how, this, how would this look for some numeric example? Well, if inverse demand is price is equal to 10 minus Q, then marginal revenue, same vertical intercept, twice the slope will be 10 minus 2Q for marginal revenue. And I'll show the graph, might as well, let me show you the graph right here. This would be the graph of this thing. Here's the demand curve, here's the marginal revenue curve, same vertical intercept, twice the slope, meaning marginal revenue is gonna cross at actually the midpoint of the demand curve. The marginal revenue horizontal intercept is gonna be the quantity corresponding to the midpoint of our demand curve and then the, the price uh, similarly. Okay, so, but uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit. Here is my example of my standard demand curve. Here is my marginal revenue function. And you're thinking, wait, wait a second, why? Like, why should it be same vertical intercept and twice the slope? Where on earth is that coming from? Okay, so the answer to the question, why? Remember, marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. So this would be like my subsequent total revenue minus my initial total revenue. That's a change divided by my subsequent quantity minus my initial quantity. That's another change. This is actually a slope, right? This is like m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is like our standard slope formula. Well, we can actually represent this using calculus, and this will be sort of my window to this explanation. Whereas I've got delta tr and delta q with the interpretation of this subtraction, we could have this, we could have these, the initial and the subsequent total revenues being infinitesimally close to each other, right? In, the distance being infinitesimally small, like infinitely small. And then we'll replace this delta with a D for like a calculus D. So I have DTR, DQ, this is telling us marginal revenue, remember, it's just the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. Okay, so let's see this. Here's total revenue, that's just price times quantity. I had a representation for price that was A minus BQ. Why? Because I, I said price is equal to A minus BQ, that's just my demand curve, times Q. I'll distribute my Q and I'll get AQ minus BQ squared. Take my derivative, this will be A minus 2BQ. Oh, that's where same vertical intercept, but twice the slope comes from. It's exactly from this Q times Q, right? All right, so here's the numeric example. TR, total revenue, is equal to inverse demand times quantity. So uh, distribute this Q, so I'll have 10Q minus Q squared, and then I'll take my derivative. Derivative of this is just going to be 10 minus 2Q, oh, 10 minus 2Q, same vertical intercept, twice the slope as my, as my demand curve. That's exactly where that's coming from. And then here again was the picture. Here's my demand curve. Here's my marginal revenue curve. And 
marginal revenue will always lie below the demand curve for the standard monopoly. This is assuming the monopoly sets a single price. If the monopoly were to practice first degree price discrimination, selling each unit for exactly the consumer's willingness to pay, then I'd have to move this marginal revenue to be coincidence with the, coincident with the demand curve. I've got a video talking about uh, first degree price discrimination. I'll link that up. Another video I've got is the link between total revenue and elasticity. I'll link that up as well, where I show the total revenue curve you draw as the downward opening parabola uh, on the same quantity axis down here, showing that the peak of total revenue is going to happen course, at, a, at a price of, uh, sorry, at a quantity of five for this demand curve. We know that because total revenue. If we maximize total revenue, we're taking a derivative with respect to quantity. This will be just marginal revenue equal to zero is the first order condition for a maximum. And sure enough, when marginal revenue is equal to zero, the quantity is five, right? Here, marginal revenue is positive. It lies it's corresponding to something above this is here's zero. Here, marginal revenue, the graph of marginal revenue is exactly zero. And down here, marginal revenue is negative. Anyway, so there's some interesting things corresponding to the link between total revenue and marginal revenue and elasticity corresponding to the, the revenue maximizing point is the midpoint of the demand curve, which is also where demand is unit elastic. And then for more details on there, I'll just, I'll just drop into the description those videos and you can follow up there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good night, everyone.